What is the bridge network driver in Docker? And how does it simplify networking on a single host? This video will try to answer that and more as simply as possible. This is the sixth video in the Docker networking series. Find links to the previous ones in the description below. If you are looking to learn more about the basics of Docker, I will recommend checking out the Docker Made Easy series. Here's the agenda for this video. We will learn what is the bridge network driver, how to use it, when to use it, and some of its limitations. Here are some quick reminders. A Docker host is a physical or virtual machine that runs the Docker daemon. Docker network drivers enable us to easily use multiple types of networks for containers and hides the complexity required for network implementations. Alright, so what is the bridge network driver? A bridge driver can be used to create an internal network within a single Docker host. A network created using the bridge driver forms a namespace that is separate from the host's network namespace. Therefore, containers running on bridge networks are isolated from the host's network. This driver is used most often for applications that require one or more containers running on a single host. When Docker is started, it automatically creates a default bridge network named bridge and uses it for containers that do not specify any networks explicitly. We can also create many custom user-defined bridge networks. User-defined bridge networks are superior to the default bridge network in the following ways. 1. User-defined bridge networks provide automatic DNS resolution between containers. Containers on the default bridge network can access each other by IP addresses unless you manually create links using the hyphen hyphen link option, which is considered legacy. These links need to be created in both directions, so this gets increasingly more complex the more containers there are to communicate. On a user-defined bridge network, containers can reach each other by name or alias. Imagine an application which has a web frontend and a database backend. If you call your containers web and db respectively, the web container can connect to the db container simply by using the host name db. Number 2. User-defined bridges provide better isolation. All containers without network specified are attached to the default bridge network, which could be a risk as unrelated stack services or containers could then be able to communicate. Using a user-defined network provides us with a scoped network in which only containers that are attached to that network are able to communicate. Number 3. Containers can be attached and detached from user-defined networks on the fly. To remove a container from the default bridge network, you need to stop the container and recreate it with different network options. But you can connect or disconnect containers from user-defined networks on the fly. Number 4. Each user-defined network creates a configurable bridge. If your containers use the default bridge network, you can configure it, but all other containers use the same settings, such as MTU and IP table rules. In addition, configuring the default bridge network happens outside of Docker itself and requires a restart of the Docker daemon. User-defined bridge networks on the other hand are created 
and configured using the docker network create command. If different groups of applications have different network requirements, we can configure each user defined bridge separately. Number 5. Linked containers on the bridge network share environment variables. Originally, the only way to share environment variables between two containers was to use the hyphen hyphen link flag. Although this is not possible with user defined networks, there are much better alternatives for sharing environment variables like sharing files using docker volumes, sharing variables from a docker compose configuration, using docker secrets or docker configs when using docker swarm services. Alright, let's learn how to use the bridge driver. I encourage you to follow along to get the most out of this hands-on lab. Let's first try to work with the default bridge network. We will start off by running two containers. Let's run the container in the background, name it app1, and we'll use the nginx alpine image. Awesome. App2 similarly. Now Docker PS shows us app1 and app2 are running. We can Test if Nginx is actually running inside them using docker exec, which is used to run a command inside a container, the name of the container, and the command to run. So, localhost on app1 shows the index page, which means Nginx is running on app1, and same thing on app2. So, Nginx is successfully running on app1 and app2. As we had discussed previously, when no particular network flag is specified from the CLI, the default bridge network is used, which means app1 and app2 are using the default bridge network. Let's try to communicate between these two containers. Let's clear the screen. If we try to reach from app1 to app2, simply by using the name of app2, this will not work. If you remember, we need to use the IP address of app2. Trying to reach app2 from app1 using its hostname app2 will not work because DNS doesn't work out of the box for the default bridge. To communicate between containers on the default bridge, we need the IP addresses. So we can get the IP address of app2 using the docker inspect command and then this filter expression and the name of the container. This shows us the IP of app2 and what about the IP of app1. It's on the same network just the last digit is different. So if we curl again but this time if we use the IP address seems to work. But using IP addresses is neither reliable nor easy to maintain since more containers could be added and existing ones could be removed. If we use the legacy link option, we could have used the name of the container instead of the IP. But there are major drawbacks when using the default bridge as discussed in the previous section. And using the link flag is discouraged. So let's directly go on to user defined bridge networks. A user defined bridge network has to be created before it can be used. So let's create one using the docker network create command. Let's name it my bridge. And specifying the driver is optional, but we can do this explicitly by saying bridge. Now if we check the network using the network ls command, we can see a my bridge network of type bridge. 
Now we will run two containers on this network. Let's name the first one app3. Let's specify the network to be my bridge. Run it. Same thing for app4. We have four containers running. Let's check if Nginx is actually working inside app3 and 4. Inside app3, we'll curl localhost. Seems to work. Same thing on app4. Seems to work. Now, if we try to reach app4 from app3, let's say docker exec. Let's run a command inside app3 and we will try to reach app4. This seems to work because DNS is automatically configured for user defined networks. The reverse is also true. Reaching app3 from app4 also works. Now, if we try to reach app2 from app3, do you think it's gonna work? Let's exec on app3 and try to curl app2. And it says it could not resolve app2. What if we use the IP address of app2? Using the IP address 172.17.0.3 and let's additionally specify a connect timeout of 5 seconds which basically says to curl to exit the command if it, if it cannot connect to this host within 5 seconds. Alright, connection timed out and it did not work again. So we cannot reach app 2 from app 3 because they are on two separate networks the default bridge and my bridge. Finally, let's learn about publishing container ports. Containers connected to the same bridge network effectively expose all ports to each other. But for a container port to be accessible from the host machine or from hosts of external networks, that container port must be published using the hyphen p or publish flag. Let's see this in action. We have four containers running. App 1 to 4. All existing containers have Nginx running inside them separately on port 80. But none of them can be reached from the host's port 80. We can confirm that by running curl localhost on the host machine. So connection refused. Now, if we want the container's application to be reachable from the host, we can publish its port using the publish flag. That's Use the run command, let's name the container app5 and additionally let's specify a hyphen p flag and we will say port 3000 on the host will map to port 80 on the container. Now if we try to look at the containers, we can see an additional option for app5 which says port 3000 on the host 0, .0, .0, .0 maps onto port 80 on the container. This simply means if we try to curl localhost on port 3000, we can successfully see Nginx running. Nice work. It's time for cleanup. We can list all containers using Docker PS, of course. And by using the flag AQ, we list all containers and only their IDs. By using this command inside docker 
rm f command we can remove all running containers with a single command one more thing to clean up we had created a bridge network called my bridge so we can simply remove that using docker network rm name of the network ls again and now it's gone all clean and tidy so when should we use the bridge driver firstly when multi-container networking is required on a single host networks created by using the bridge driver are contained within a single host therefore it is ideal for most workloads that run on a single machine like an engineer's local development environment or a company that runs multiple applications on a single server etc secondly when using docker compose docker compose simplifies running multi container workloads on a single machine it does so by using a yaml configuration file like the following example this configuration file specifies a set of services that use docker images to run containers and bridge networks are automatically set up to enable inter-container communication compose creates and uses user-defined bridge networks out of the box when its services are first created using the docker compose up command it also removes the user-defined bridge networks created when services are taken down using the docker compose down command we will learn more about the awesome docker compose tool in an upcoming video so stay tuned limitations of the bridge driver limited to a single host the bridge driver provides seamless network isolation for containers on a single host only if networking between multiple hosts is required either the overlay driver or some custom OS level routing has to be implemented secondly bridge driver is slower than host driver since an internal network has to be created and ports have to be mapped for the bridge driver it incurs more overhead in terms of raw network performance at the cost of providing better isolation than the host driver if you are not running multiple containers on a single production machine or if a very high network throughput is required then the host driver might provide a better alternative to the bridge driver due to its faster performance lastly the default bridge drawbacks as discussed previously in this section differences between default bridge and user defined bridge networks the default bridge is far inferior to the user defined ones the default bridge network is considered a legacy detail of docker and is not recommended for production use so in conclusion we learned about the bridge network driver in docker what it is how to use it some possible use cases and limitations by creating an internal network the bridge driver simplifies network isolation on a single host but its drawbacks are to be kept in mind especially when using it in production i hope i could make things clearer for you be it just a tiny bit in the next video we will learn about the overlay driver which simplifies multi-host container networking thanks for making it so far see you on the next one but till then be bold and keep learning but most importantly take care